Hello guys, today's tutorial will be a soft tutorial because in the last tutorial it was like a little bit complex with all that loop within a loop thing and whatnot. And what we're going to do is a breakable object. And to do that, I actually have a vase over here, so I'm going to put it into Unity, into the sprites. And if I find it, where is it? Okay, here it is. It's just a simple vase, as you can see. And it's broken parts. Okay. And I made the, the voice, if I recall, 102 and by 102. So we're going to divide it in that ratio. And also put here in the people put remote point. So let's go to the sprite editor, apply, slice, create. And let's make it 102 by 102. Oops. Slice them, and as you can see, they are sliced like this. You could also do it in automatic mode, but then you'd have to puzzle the, to kind of make a puzzle with the little pieces. So what I'm going to do is just like put it like that. Save, and and I'm going to put the vase in the scene, like that. I'm just make the vase box collider, but you can make it whatever you want. Anyways, like so, and you can make it the trigger or not. I will stay. I'll make it still like that. Anyways, I'm going to add a script to it called breakable object that will change in a moment. Now what I'm going to do is first off, name this vase, and I'm going to create an empty game object. So Control Shift M, and name it vase broken. And I'm going to drag each one of these pieces into the scene, like so. And because I don't want to make puzzles, I'm just going to drag all of them, all of those pieces into the broken base, and change and select them all and change its position to be zero zero zero. And as you can see, now they make a perfect base, although they are all broken. As you can see, I cut them a bit badly, so as you can see, there's a little, these little cuts. But they don't matter much. Uh, by the way, we're also going to add them, uh, add components to them. So add component, polygon, collider 2D, and as you can see, we've made these little colliders for the pieces. And you can change them, but because they are a bit off, as you can see, there are these parts where they aren't very well. But for me, it's okay, and I don't want to to spend much time in this. Anyways, let's make this a prefab, so drag it into here. Now we have the broken vase. And I'm going to also put here the vase. And now I'm going to do this vase over here. Okay, in this vase there's a breakable object script that we created in a while. So let's go in there. And what we want, well, first thing, we want to instantiate something, so we're going to put here public game object, broken bits. Which is the broken, which is the part of the vase that is broken, and we also need a way to to detect the collision. So what I'm going to do is to make here a function, which will be a public void break it, which will be executed in two occasions. First on void on trigger enter to D. Will be it will be executed and also on void on collision enter to the it will also be executed. So, but it will not be executed always. Only when something in particular hits it. So so in this case, I'm going to put here collider to the other and we're going to check if if other dot tag equals uh, projectile and if it does equal projectile I want to break it like so and here I want to detect a collision to the call and I'll check and I want to check if the call which is a collision dot collider dot tag equals 
projectile. And if it is, I want to call the break it function. And for those of you that don't know, um, we have your uh, if our player is in the cat state, meaning meaning if the lives are more than two, so are more than one, so it has two, and the evolution script is on, then our player turns into a cat that can throw um, fireball yeah. as a yeah. and we we'll time it. And if you don't have a way to do this, well, just make make the player throw something. Um, in the description, just make the player throw something. In the description, there is the evolution script. You can just copy it. In the description, you have the link for the, all the scripts. You can find this one and copy the part where it throws something. Anyway, I'm going to make the furball be a projectile. So, you need to add a component, add a tag, uh, call it projectile, and name it projectile. And now this the furball is a, a trigger. So if you don't know when a trigger, it's a collider. It it uh, it makes the on trigger function happen on the trigger itself and on the collider. So the vase is a collider, and it has an on trigger function. So when the vase enters it, it will trigger this function. And it seems like we have an error. Let's see. Oh, it does nothing. Okay. So now if I play, you'll see that the bracket function will happen. Anyways, what I want to do in the bracket function is destroy this dot game object, and I want to instantiate the broken bits. Oops, bit, which are the the which is the broken base at the transform dot position with the quaternion dot identity meaning no rotation okay and if I play you'll see that as soon as I as that furball hits the jar yeah. that jar disappears and it appears the broken jar but it appeared out of place for some reason and let me see in the here in the prefab what happened so okay what happened is that this position has to be zero 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 and it wasn't so right now it will show exactly in the same place. Yeah. Okay. But it isn't doing anything. And to do something, what I'm going to do is to add to all of this component a rigid body 2D. And I'm going to create an uh material to it so that we can manipulate it. So here I'm going to create a new physics 2D material, call it broken bits. And I make I'll mix I'll make the friction be like 0.2 something like that you know just so that they can slide a bit. Let's see if this way they'll slide or not. So go into the prefabs folder, find the broken face, select all of them, go into the physics material, and drag the broken bits part into here. And let's see if they they slide a bit. Yeah. And as you can see, they slide a bit. And that's the simple way. That's basically it. Now I also want them to kind of explode. So what I'm going to do is go through all of these elements and make them go up. And that's pretty simple to do. Uh, first we have to give a name to this game object. So I'm going to make here game object. So I'm going to put here game object and call it broke equals this as a game object okay like that and now I'm going to go and the broke basically is this and then we to use a for each loop to iterate through all these transforms so just do here for each loop for each transform child in the broke dot game dot transform and this way we're going we're iterating through all of the shells of the broken object 
and what I want to do is to give them a, a, a force so child.get component and the component is the rigid y2d component and I'm going to access its velocity and make it equal to a new vector 2 and we're going to put here random range random range so that it can be like a little bit random values so the x can vary between minus 2 and 2 float and the y can vary between between like let's see 5 and 10 float just let's see how this works out let's see if I hit play if it goes like we wanted as you can see they broke apart just like we wanted and that's a bit better now I want to make a little change because in some games the player isn't able to collide with these broken bits and to do that what I'm going to do is to create here a new layer so I'm going to add a layer called uh, broken bits and then we're going to put all of those broken bits into there so now these broken bits have are in that layer and now what I'm going to do is in code is to change this on the edit project settings physics 2d you see this table over here this kind of table we're going to change it through code and this basically tells us what colliders are colliding with what colliders so basically what we want to do is make the player not collide with the broken bits so just uncheck that box and if I hit play and go into yeah. the vase you'll see oops the player Let's see if the player, the player also has to have that player. Yes. Okay. Right now, as you can see, the player doesn't collide with the, with that. And what I'm going to do. So first, first thing, make sure that the player is in the player layer. And what I'm going to do is to make here a bool. So I'm going to put here public bool collides with bits and here when it breaks I'm going to make make here if collides with bits is active then it doesn't do anything but if it is false meaning it if it doesn't collide then it will the uh, to access the physics 2d dot ignore layer collision as you can see this request for int and also a bool if you want to make it true or false to ignore or not and if you don't if you you make it oh if, but if you don't put that bool it's true and it, it ignores it anyways it requests for int and those ints are basically this uh, layer ints but maybe because these these numbers are different for you from you and it's just easier to read all you have to do is instead of putting those ints over here, just put here layer mask dot layer uh, name to layer, and all you have to put here is the name of the layer. So the layers that you want to not collide is the player layer. So player, and again layer to ma layer mask dot name to layer, and now the name was broken bits, was it? Like that broken bits bits save and now as, and as you can see this is converting the name to the int of that layer and let's see if that's working so here in the vase I'm going to make it collide with bits so if it collides with bits it should be like it was before yeah. but it isn't so before I do anything, I'm just going to put this back to default. So here in the edit project settings, physics 2D, I'm going to turn this on again. And now, in the vase, uh, if this is on, if collide with bits is on, nothing will happen. Yeah. And it will, it will collide with them, as you can see. But if it's off, then it won't collide with them. As you can see, and you know, the final thing that I'm just going to do is to put, go into the base broken, add a component which is a destroy by time script and destroy it after you know 
something three seconds. And right now, if I go into the if I break it, and after three seconds, all that disappears. And you know, that's basically it. Anyways, thank you for watching this tutorial. Uh, if you have any requests, tell me in the comments. And see you in the next one. Thanks.